Hello, hello, hello. This is another curb blog where we talk about super. So Vegito EX is here and Masako too. And hopefully you will be listening all the way through. Cause if you don't, I'll be really upset. And everybody close their windows now. But for those of you who didn't, hi, welcome back. We're doing yet another <laughs> curb blog about talking about Dragon Ball related bullshit. Uh, I'm joined by, uh, as has often joined me many times in talking about the same bullshit, Mike of Gito EX. Say hello, sir. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. And uh, and for the first time since all the way back in my uh, my seven, or I guess technically eight, because he was late on that one, so we had the extra one with Lanny, our DBZ-related curb locks leading up to Resurrection F coming out back in spring of last year. It's Masako X Lawrence Simpson. Hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Curb. I've been expecting you. Because you've invited me, so I was expecting oh, oh, it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was about to say like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the first time since I think like God, that was like April of last year. I think yeah, we did pretty that. much, yeah. And just talking to you and Lanny about how Team Four Star began and all that. So, so welcome back. It's, it's since it's been all that time. All right, so <laughs> I guess if you haven't already gathered from I guess the the video title or whatever by this point, or if perhaps you're listening to this on uh, Mike's podcast feed, because I'm guessing this will be also a new sort of a new content show episode technically <laughs> if i'm editing the show it's going in my feed yes it's going in the feed so it's technically that too whatever hi everybody also from the forums if you're listening to this too okay anyway yes we're going to talk about today as it is now we're recording this uh once again time traveling what else is new uh we're recording this on wednesday night uh january 20th this will be going up on my, my channel on the 26th uh i'm skipping a weekend because I have a charity thing I'm doing with uh, uh, with John Ortiz. Some call me Johnny, which I hope uh, some of you listening were there for, uh, and hopefully it went off without a hitch. Uh, but anyway, so th- this will actually be coming out just after uh, what I believe we're up to, what, the 28th episode of Dragon Ball Super airing? Yeah, and we're going to be starting up the next arc. Okay, well, we'll so, so we'll be technically, if, you, if you're keeping up with it as they come out, we'll technically be behind by one episode. But that's okay, because we're mainly going to talk about... Uh, the resurrection of F slash revival of F slash Fukatsu no F slash the Golden Frieza saga, as I'm now going to <laughs> Chris, point it. <laughs> can we can we just call it the other Frieza arc? Sure, I was I, I like the Golden Frieza saga. I I mean I I think it's I think that's kind of cute, but. Um, you know, in my old school Funimation lining up your videotapes to make a picture way of doing things. But yes, the, the other Frieza arc, the the return uh, adaptation of the new movie that came out within the last year. It, it's extremely strange to say that we've now had yeah. a uh, theatrical version of the story followed by a TV anime adaptation of the same story, both within the span of 2015. Um, but here we are. So, uh, so guys, we've gone through uh, another several months now of Dragon Ball Super airing. And uh, Mike, you, you know, you and I have been talking about this stuff. But Masako, you also just... Uh, did a little uh, what, what was it? it was the top seven or top ten facts of uh, of of our, how we can make Dragon Ball Super more super was that what it was that just came out recently? It was like there was like no particular order about it, Kerb. Uh, it was just basically seven ways that Dragon Ball Super can be super. It's on my channel, and basically uh, I just thought, well, uh, seven facts, uh, Dragon Balls, seven of you, you gotta yes. find those gut yeah. met Dragon Balls and all those kind of <laughs> things. So why not? People like those articles with the number at the beginning. You won't believe what number four is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, in kind of talking about that, you know, just recently, you know, I mean, the, the thoughts have been less than stellar, but M- Mike and I, when we talked about the, uh, the Battle of Gods adaptation or the, the Beerus saga, quote unquote, as I was calling it, uh, our, our kind of thing was like, all right, we like the movie generally more than the TV adaptation, but you know, still open and excited about, you know, what could be coming up in the future because the new material that was added and the, the, the new just like little fun adventure filler episodes uh, were enjoyable enough that it's like we're not losing hope. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's probably still kind of what we're all at because we were about to start a completely new storyline. But uh, I guess, Mosca, since you are new, why don't we start with this? So, you know, in, in keeping up with these episodes, 
And then obviously off camera, we were talking about how you you have seen Resurrection F, of course, in theaters, just like we did. What what did, what did you think about just this the, the last couple of months and just kind of going about this entire retelling of what we've only just watched a little while ago? Well, the interesting thing was is that in outside the US, it took a lot longer to get into our hands, really. And I tr- and I willed myself throughout the entire summer not to look for any kind of video f- feeds of it or ask anybody of oh, my US friends to tell me what happened. So I kept my spoilers at arm's length. That is incredibly impressive in the digital age, I just, I just want to say. I was really, I was really <laughs> impressed with myself. I, I didn't expect how I was able to do it, considering <laughs> I eat, breathe Dragon Ball in some shape or form every day. But eventually, at the end of September, I scored some tickets. I went with my girlfriend to... Uh, uh, cinema in London. Uh, it was a very small s- screening, but there was only one screening when I booked it. But thankfully, there were five screenings on that day. We got it for initially one day, but eventually okay. they they've extended it. They extended it out to about me three, four, possibly five. But um, okay. yeah, so um, actually, I believe today they're actually showing some in some cinemas here the three D version of Resurrection F. It's like way after they're yeah, doing but, that. Okay, so anyway, going on to what it was. So I didn't see Resurrection F, and pretty much anyone in the UK didn't see Resurrection F until September. In some cases, early October. And wow. Yeah. Okay. So basically we got to the Resurrection F arc late October, early November. So, basically, we'd only just seen the movie, and then yeah, we were getting into Super. <laughs> and, then, and then seeing an, an adaptation of it, like, the next week. Was that was that jarring at all? It was, so it was just, like, kind of, like, almost like, uh, but I already wa- But I already watched it. Now can we get to the new no, shit? The Beerus Saga, <laughs> for me, at least there was a bit of a gap. So I felt like, well, uh-huh. okay, I like the differences. I like that. I like that Bulma's on a boat. I like that. And, you know, despite the animation inconsistencies and, you know, episode five. The thing was, though, is that I've noticed that whenever Super gets a bad rap and there's been a really notoriously bad episode, there usually comes an episode after that where it comes on strong. Like, episode five was really, really shockingly poor. And then... Only in a couple of scenes. But then episode six came in with some great Vegeta humor. And it was just like, nice. Okay, you've redeemed yourself. And it slowly went back up. Then it just fell down again. And same goes for Resurrection F, really. On that same kind of note, just to cut in real no, quick. And, and Mike, like, you know, on, on your website, you have a lot of extensive guides and, and coverage written by, like, by various folks I was going about... to say, hmm, that sounds exactly like how Dragon Ball Z already was anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, you know, kind of to summarize that and that how, you know, there's different animation directors, you know, every other episode there, you know, sometimes are different scenario writers, especially now in this case where there's new material to be written from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, well, I guess on that note, maybe not just to educate you, Masako, but any, anybody out there who might be curious, like, is there anything you want to throw in about that that like maybe worth, might be worth talking about? Or? I mean, it goes back all the way to Super as a product from the beginning, where it was kind of announced out of nowhere. They literally had nothing to show for it. Uh, it's clearly been a rushed production from beginning to end. Uh, we've seen the exact opposite with Super from what we saw with the Frieza movie. And yeah, the UK, you guys got it a little later than ever. Everyone else, but all things considered, that movie made its way throughout the entire world much faster than Battle of Gods did. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Home releases came out more quickly, although you guys are still waiting on your home release, but you're getting like a double pack and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Super is kind of the antithesis of that, where it's rushed, it's clearly got production problems. We're hearing hints of that from the people literally working on the show itself, saying how rushed its production schedule is. Uh, The amount of outsourced animators is very different from how it was uh, in the 90s. Um, And Super is still, we're only just hearing there's going to be the the first international release will be for Toonami Asia. Uh, It's still not out anywhere. Uh, Super is kind of a mess. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very, see, it's a very strange, I don't even know how to describe it. This sort of time that the Dragon Ball franchise is in is very interesting because off the heels of Resurrection F, which was, which did extremely well all over the place, all across the board. And, uh, and you know, with with the, 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 the game still doing really well and the show still being on TV like with, with Kai airing on Toonami and everything, like it, its presence is still very much like ingrained 
you know, all over the place. But super right now is this kind of weird thing where it's like, because we still don't have it. We're not going to have it for probably a very long time. And uh, and I don't know. I, I'm like, and and because of the way the internet is kind of like talking about it right now in in very much a bit of a, a negative connotation, it's, I don't know, it's a little concerning, I guess you could say, like as a fan and as someone who like, Wants the franchise to do well. Right. Uh, I don't yeah. think anybody necessarily wants it to do badly. Well, we'll, we'll get to that at the end, but what I'm hoping for is that, you know, by the time this comes out and, you know, the new, new stuff starts up, uh, I'm hoping that things will change a little bit. Don't get your hopes up. Do not get your hopes up <laughs> well, for anything there. Fair enough. Uh, although, I guess on that same note, I don't, Mike, I don't remember if when we recorded ours, uh, mm-hmm. some of the other little extra filler episodes between the uh, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F stuff had come out. Uh, but I guess, you know, even if, if we reiterate a little bit, um, we did have a couple extra episodes of like, hey, here's what everybody's been up to in the meantime after, you know, the fight between we Beerus did, and right, Goku. Right. And uh, I, I will say, if, again, if we didn't already, that I thought those episodes were very, very cute. Yeah, they were, they were fantastic. We did not talk about those last time. So we got the great stuff where the aliens came down uh, and were afraid of a particular type of Earthling. And we had some great, uh, you know, between character moments there. Uh, stuff like Goku learning how to use a cell phone that is like that is exactly what I want out of my Dragon Ball in 2015, 2016. Yeah. And those moments were just they were very well directed. Everyone felt precisely in character. That moment where Goku busts through like the Kool-Aid man. I mean, it was just so spot on with how yeah, those yeah. characters exactly. are. I felt so happy that I felt so disillusioned at the end of the Battle of God's Ark. And I was like. I really don't know what to think about this. And then I get into the filler and I saw the um, Mm. eye catcher for Mr. Satan going Super Saiyan. And we're like, what? Right, right. That caused almost as much of the stink as saying Vegeta in 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 an amusement park train. That that was just like, that caused the internet to explode and go like, what? Right, right. <laughs> it's, I gotta see this. It's like Will Smith says, "I got to get me one of these." Uh, a, hi- a highlight for me was also uh, great, great Saiyan man Gohan playing with Pan and uh, Mr. Satan flipping out about oh, that, that and everything. Too. That was a particularly oh, definitely very yep. cute. And who moment. could forget just here, just Goku going like, yeah, you know, saying, "Hey, I want you to hit me, just hit me," <laughs> and then just get hearing old Nazar just going, Whoa! and then just like, Whoa! and then just the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> that I that I I have to admit that was probably the, one of the funniest things I've seen in Dragon Ball in a long time. A very a pessimistic friend of ours who will remain nameless uh, went so far as to say that 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 moment that that moment that has been gift all over Twitter and Tumblr is so far the best thing that has ever happened in Dragon Ball Super at all. <laughs> I can I see that. Yeah. I don't know if I would agree with that. But it was, that was, yeah, that was some spot on animation. <laughs> to get to what you were saying, yes, those transitional moments were wonderful. And like the very earliest episodes of Super, episodes one, two, and three, um, gave us great moments with the characters. It was kind of that reunion again. And I guess the only real criticism you could have would be, well, how many reunions do we need? We had the Jump Super anime tour special, which was a reunion. Battle of Gods is basically a reunion. And then we just retold Battle of Gods. So that was kind of a reunion. And then to spend more time with the characters getting to know them again did we need that on top of it so i feel like that's the only real criticism you could give of that transitional material i'm not going to call it filler because again this is the original product it's yes filling time but definition filler shonen blah 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 whatever all in all i think you pretty much had a great time watching that transition all the meanwhile you're waiting for the new version of the frieza arc to start and then even more furthermore if you're following along with toyotaro's manga that's being published in v-jump each month you know there are more characters that need to be introduced and you're sitting there going wait in the manga they're already here when is this gonna start so you kind of get that anticipation building and building and looking for the differences and how is that going to be different from that with all the other differences on top of it so there's a lot of analysis going on while you're watching it see funny thing kind of tying them with two different points you just kind of uh hit up so in in talking about the reunions yeah so the jump super anime tour for those of you who have not seen uh yo it's the return of goku and his friends uh special previously when battle of gods came out even in the dub they they kept everything with this is accurate uh, Vegeta's little brother Tarbol uh, was acknowledged right. as a 
ca- a character who exists. And um, we didn't get the the Jump Super Anime Tour anywhere else outside of just on that website and at the, the festival that they showed it at uh, in Japan. Yeah, it, it was 2008 and Toei, well, really, Shueisha was in charge of it. Uh, they did do yeah. a global stream of it, subtitled in, I think, four languages. So there was a legal yeah. option to view it. And then the only other thing we got, Tarble was included as a playable character in Raging Blast 2, which I think was 2010? Yes, yes I believe so. Yes. So, and then in the uh, the Battle of Gods adaptation in the anime, we didn't talk about this, Mike, because it just wasn't worth mentioning, yeah, yeah. but uh, Tarble was not brought up in that little moment of, oh, we have to find like right. five Saiyans for Goku to do the transformation. Oh, don't you have a little brother? They, they did not keep that in there. Right. Uh, and and interestingly enough, in terms of you know what we're looking forward to with some certain new characters, we have a uh, perhaps a new Saiyan character who happens to look a lot like that same design of Tarble. Yeah, it's not the same bit. character, but yeah. he looks a little, he looks a little like either. him. Yeah. And and even on the dub side, I part of me kind of thinks that like because Tarble ended up like amounting to nothing, and they never dubbed that special in the end. And Todd Habercorn was uh, right. lined up to play him because he did have been Raging Blast too. Part of me thinks maybe Chris Sabat was just like, I'm just going to give you Jocko because Tarble didn't amount to anything. <laughs> exactly. You deserve something here. Yeah. <laughs> just totally, yeah. I mean, and, and Todd played Jocko wonderfully. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. So I guess going to finally the, you know, the episodes themselves. And, and I, I remember I definitely said this on uh, when, when we did the, the, the Beer Saga discussion thing, Mike. I was kind of trying to have a little bit of an open mind because... I liked Battle of Gods more than Resurrection F, and Resurrection F left a lot of things open, and there were a few different things that I felt they could have expanded upon and maybe right, you know, done, right. done some things better, etc. I was really kind of hoping for that, and a tiny little bit they did with certain things, but they really didn't go to much of anything further than I was hoping. Right. Well, to, to go with that, and I think you just said it, and this is not an original thought, I think many people felt that, as opposed to Battle of Gods, the Frieza movie had the most to gain from from an extended version or a retold version. There was so much you could do with Frieza's training that maybe we sort of did get. Uh, Some of the things we thought might be expanded were not, and some of the things we didn't expect to be expanded were. So maybe let's take it in that direction for a little bit, redirecting your own question here, Chris. Again, I can't help it. I'm so used to moderating discussions. I just... No, no, please, 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 rein rein me in. So over to to the (laughs) Masako of the X's. What did you think? Let's go specifically to Tagama. That was so different that I don't think any of us expected that to be the different thing, right? I have to admit, again, I was discussing this, and in my mind, I was just thinking, oh... As soon as I saw the frog, I went like, "Oh, yeah. right, oh, interesting," <laughs> and I, and because I had a feeling because that Tagama in the movie is basically shot off into space, right, it, right, it, it, yeah, as like collateral damage of Frieza having a little temper tantrum, first temper tantrum of the day and new life, but um, essentially he, it was just nice. I'm thinking, "Ooh, we're actually getting something with Tagama." And it fits with his character. Yeah, he, he he wants to prove himself. And he basically, yeah, after being kind of like, yeah, he's like, oh, this freezer guy, oh, he's not so tough. Right. Pop one punch, mm-hmm. basically almost like one punch. And he's just basically absolutely like, I, I don't know what to think about my life anymore. Uh, freezer, you, you know, you caused all this turmoil in my mind. Teach me. Yeah, and sort this out. Basically, atone for my confusion. And sure enough, he became a lot stronger. And then <laughs> it was just great just to have the Ginyu thing. And it's just like, Oh, this is great. This is a nice little callback. Also, actually, a little bit of closure at the same time. Cause, yeah, I feel know, the same way. Yeah, it just felt like, oh, well, you know, the Ginyu thing kind of petered out. Oh, he yeah. comes back. Oh, okay, now it's closure. Okay, all right. He can go off and join. He can go and join off his Ginyu Force buddies. See it. It okay. For one thing, first of all, I'm gonna put this out here because I know there's gonna be some comments about this. If you want to get really technical, oh, but how the frog would have been dead when the, for all of these reasons? Yeah, we get it. That's great. I don't care because it was a really funny idea. So I was able to look past the logic of how, oh, but that doesn't work because of all these other 10 things that happened in the story that would prevent that, whatever. It's like it, taking liberties. It was it was a funny, funny idea, and I was cool with them doing it. Just to go along with that, and this ties back to the Frieza movie, uh, something Toriyama uh-huh. said about it is that as the author, him finally getting back some of that control as the original creator, yeah. uh, he's 
hinted at this before with things he's done, but he just flat out said he doesn't really care that much about continuity. And he feels yeah. like whatever the best decision is for the story, whatever's fun, whatever makes not the most sense, but just the most sense in the moment, he's happy to go along with it. Continuity be damned. And I think that's yeah. just like you were saying, it's it's a clever little thing and they had something to do with it. So why not do it? Absolutely. And, and even, you know, because it's funny because even in the movie itself, it's like Freeze is stuck in specifically the Earth's hell and it's a hilarious scene. Yes, we know. In the show, he was in regular hell and blah, blah, blah. And he was gay boy friends with Cell, which was also hilarious. We get it. Okay, but we don't need to keep 100% consistent with that just to appease you because it was a funny fucking scene and it worked in the context of the movie. So just be happy with it, okay? Kind of you thing, seem you way know? more angry than even I am about fandom. No, I because I don't know. Because I meet so many fans who like give, I feel, I'm going to go and say this, too much of a shit about those kind of things and are focusing too much on getting like uppity about about that as opposed to just enjoying the the actual entertainment value of it. And you know, listen, I I do give a shit about continuity and consistency, like don't get me wrong, but it's just meant to be especially by this point, I feel like Dragon Ball is just like it's entertainment. It's not like it's not like one of those franchises that you're fully like, "Oh my god, like you're really investing yourself into the the world and, and the lore like One Piece or like Star Wars or something like that. It's entertainment. So it's like, and especially in the case of where, yeah, somebody like Toriyama goes ahead and says, uh, it's like, I'm just trying to write something interesting and funny and entertaining. Enjoy it or not. It's like, yeah, that's that's the mentality to take. So that's uh, whatever. That's my little mini rant on that. I, I agree and disagree with that mini rant as someone who spends an inordinate amount of time uh, dealing with the lore of the series. Uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate the continuity uh, when it, it can be maintained. And I, sure, yeah. I very much disagree with the shut up, turn your brain off, just enjoy it. Because I think, you know, we want to hold the story to a higher standard. It is 30 years old at this point uh, there's so much right. more you can do with with it uh, we're all older along with it of course with the new fans so th- there's just a lot of things pulling the series in different directions but um yeah. like you were saying like i was saying with toriyama I, I think at the end of the day you have to come to terms with who toriyama is as an author and at the same time remember that he's not the only one in charge of it and also just to and that as well uh, well because to, to kind of go with what you were saying as well my my kind of thing is more about in agreement with your point of that canon is something that is so like whatever in Dragon Ball that that's why I don't think it's worth like getting so like but about in general uh, it, like that's it that's more of my nothing thing, but. now all right well I'm redirecting again so we were talking about the yes, Tagama okay. the Ginyu stuff uh, a little bit of yeah, Shisami yeah. So, there t- talking about Ginyu the Ginyu thing and everything yeah which was really funny I felt like it it was not really utilized like to its fullest extent like it was like it was a very, very funny idea, like I was saying, but like in the end, it amounted to like, here's one episode and he acts like in you and he's funny and it's like, all right, cool. But then it's just like, OK, he's gone now. Right. And then that's over. So I liked this was something I was hoping for in the TV version was will we get to see what is Frieza's actual training? And while we didn't yeah. really see it, we got a really dark hint of what it was there uh, out yeah. there in space with Tagama. So I appreciated that. But then at the same time, like you said, we came back and then we got these couple jokes and then it was all for naught. Yeah. And then it was all just like, okay, here's straight up all the stuff that already happened in the movie. It's like, oh. I was actually kind of reminded when I saw the training with Targama and Frieza. I was kind of reminded when Vegeta was like frantically trying to find out how to become Super Saiyan. Definitely. Yeah, I got that vibe. And I thought, maybe it's a common place. Maybe it's somewhere that Vegeta went to train and then Frieza went like, (laughs) where did Vegeta go to train? He probably just ate what Vegeta did and remembering after all the whole Zenkai, the Zenkai boost and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Where do, we go, where do we go in space to be angry and throw a temper tantrum and then we get what we want and exactly. we become gold? So what you're saying is complain long enough and loud enough and you get what you want because you're yes. a spoiled baby. It, it, yeah, and, and in space where nobody can hear you <laughs> except for Takuma. Right. Um, I, I, okay, this is... This is going to be my one, like, I don't usually like to do this sort of thing, but th- I, this is going to be my one kind of like, if I were to do it kind of douche moment, sure. just because this this was something something that I was really hoping, I, I, you, know, you know, I should say, something I was hoping that they would have done is, and, and this is spinning off the bit about Frieza's training, is I was hoping so desperately 
that they would do an episode, just one, all we needed was one episode of going back and forth between Goku and Vegeta training with Whis up in the in mm. Beerus' realm and Frieza training. I, you know, I didn't even realize that Takuma was going to be involved, but just Frieza's training at the same time yeah, yeah. and showing the differences between those. That would have been I think great, that yeah. if they had done an episode like that, that would have been incredibly cool, very in-depth, great room for character development, great expansion upon what was already shown in the movie. I would have loved something like that. Now, now granted, I did like that they did show a lot more about the training uh, between Goku and Vegeta. Uh, and yet, once again, there's uh, this always seems to be like a but, and followed by all these, you know, kind of, like, oh, this was cool, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then the other kind of major thing I was sort of hoping for was just like, just, just a little teeny tiny something extra to show about how the blue-haired yeah. Super Saiyan yes. blue god yes. Super Saiyan form works. The one little teeny tiny thing that we got out of it, and it's like, all right, I, I guess that's cool that we got that, was that Goku has a line, uh, I think it was in the most recent episode, where he says, um, you know, I needed help from those other five Saiyans to, to reach the god form the first mm -hmm. time. Vegeta was able to achieve this transformation entirely on his own because he's that good. And it's like, yeah. all right, well, there is a reason, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that was that was actually going to be my question for you guys. Is uh, So, like you were saying, you wanted an explanation for it, and we didn't get an explanation for it. We got an answer about it. And I think that's a very distinct difference in explanation versus an answer. Do you think it was a sufficient one? Um, I mean, I don't know, because I mean, maybe even part of me is like, oh, will will we somehow learn more or something? Mm, or I, yeah. I don't even want to hold on to that hope at this point. I think my biggest issue with it was that up to now, all the major transformations in Z and Dragon Ball and even GT, they had some sense of occasion. I mean, even when Goku became Super Saiyan God, that had a sense of occasion and significance. Even in Super, yeah. Yeah. that you know, the scene, the music, and the soundtrack in Super when he became Super Saiyan God was really, really epic. I thought, nice, okay, I'm pumped. Yeah. I like in this, and Gohan going Super Saiyan two for the first time. Goku going Super Saiyan 3 for the first time on, you know, on screen. You just think, whoa, those are significant moments. I mean, I'll still attest that Fusion Reborn Goku Super Saiyan 3's transformation, that was just the best. That's the best transformation, and I, that's like my yardstick. And with Super Saiyan Blue, okay, the first time you see it, it's kind of cool, but you just think that's not the first time that they did it. And it just felt like a bit of a non-event. And the fact is, you to me, it just felt there's something missing. In some ways, isn't that similar to how Vegeta first transformed against number 19, where it was, that was not his first time. It was just a thing that he could do at that point. Like you were just saying, though, that they made an occasion of it. But maybe the point of this in both the movie and the TV version is this is so beyond him at this point that he's almost nonchalant about it. And maybe that's to drive the point home that, yes, Freeze is technically technically stronger but these two have so much more to them that this isn't even a big deal anymore i think the difference yeah. is is that i feel that with when vegeta went super saiyan yeah okay that's true you're absolutely correct there but then you got a flashback almost at once showing the moment where vegeta was down on his luck saying how sure, the sure. hell am i gonna get super saiyan and within that moment he does it and you just think, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I saw it and you could see he was pushed to the absolute edge of insanity just to get become Super Saiyan. And at, the, at his most desperate moment, he did it. And I just would have liked to see the moment that they discovered this and discovered the moment they were able to control their godly energy. Well, the the other kind of interesting thing too, uh, Mike, because your, your point is, is completely sound, yeah. I was going to say, like, I'm actually conflicted about it because this is one of those, well, you don't need to tell me everything, but I feel like if you're going to give that half answer, you might as well just explain it. Yeah, see, because, okay, the, the original, the red-haired Super Saiyan God form, what was really unique and really great about the use of that transformation in the movie was how it was attained and Goku's reaction to it. What made it feel very like, okay, this is interesting new material going beyond, you know, where the manga was and et cetera about that film because the Super Saiyan God transformation was, was made a very big deal out of is the fact that like Goku doesn't like it when he does it. He doesn't like it because he had to get help to reach it. And he was like, I wish that I could have done this on my own because that's what I'm all about in terms of my martial arts studies. And that was what made for a really interesting kind of developmental thing 
for Goku's character in in the span of that entire story. But in in both uh, in, in both the, the Battle of Gods uh, adaptation and then you know going on now with this uh, the the, the blue haired form it became kind of trivialized where it's like, okay, well now we just found the God power and now this is just the thing that we're at. And it's like, okay, like in some ways that almost kind of like, and especially without even showing like, okay, what is the significance of the blue form? It also kind of cheapens the the kind of like uniqueness about the the red haired Super Saiyan God form. Because, you know, to, to talk about the confliction a little bit, I agree in that I don't think it, it needs to necessarily have like this giant like, oh my God, like explanation or whatever. But I think just like giving any kind of like, you know, deal to it uh, in some way, I think just, just just to kind of like put it into context of like what this means for the characters and their growth, uh, you know, would have been cool. But, and, and the other thing too was it was so instantaneous. Like all we're kind of left to assume is, you know, when, when Whis tosses them in that, uh, you know, time chamber-esque kind of pocket dimension where they're training for who knows how long, mm, yeah, yeah. they come out and they have that transformation. And we don't even see that. So it's like, okay, well then it's like, are we just supposed to like interpret how they got to it? Or is it, is it supposed to be left up to our imagination? Like, it's very unclear. It's just like, here it is. It's like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. It's, it's, it felt like a yeah, letdown. It's, it's interesting. It, it, it is a little conflicting. I, I, I do get what you mean on that. There's so much like, it sucks too, because like I was saying before, where I don't, I don't like to, you know, get all like, woe is me about certain aspects of Dragon Ball, especially that sort of thing, because I feel like it's not that far away from like the power level bitching. But I don't know. I feel like because the Super Saiyan God, the, the red haired version of it was utilized so well and so creatively in the Battle of Gods, like story idea. And then the blue haired form is just like, this is the thing too. And it's just like, it's, it's executed a little weak in comparison. It's like, I don't know what really to think about it, so. I think because Super Saiyan God had a more of an impact, because this was a brand new form, and this was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. This is like the newest form of Super Saiyan since we've seen Super Saiyan 4. And you just think, ooh, I wonder what this, what is this form like? This is so different. Goku is much leaner, you know, smaller in frame. Yeah, he looks more kind of like delicate. How is this going to work? And you think I, I found it really interesting. Yeah, it, because when we found out about Battle of Gods back in 2013, this was just after I uh, the death battle between Goku versus Superman came out. They'd done the months and months of research, and then suddenly Toriyama goes like, "Ah, oh, it's cute. <laughs> yep. Here's a new form. Yeah, go to it. Yeah, yeah." Then I just saw as soon as I saw that, I'm thinking. There's going to be around two, isn't there? See, and, and you know what? That's the funny thing. I, I'm not to give like too much credit to that either, because Death Battle I have mixed feelings on sometimes. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> like, that's the thing in that in that Death Battle video, they the way that they like animated it was like the blue haired form was almost like a Super Saiyan God two or something, where like he just goes into one form, then goes into the next one. We don't even really know if that's how it works. We don't know if it's just like, oh, you just like become it. It's like its own separate thing, like sanctioned off, and it's not like you do it in an order or whatever. Like when Goku was explaining, you know, one, two, and three to Boo at that one time. Right, right. Like I don't even think that I don't even think that that's that is how it is. I think it's just its own thing in and onto itself. It's so vague, and it's just like here's a cool thing that I guess maybe by mer merchandise of or not, whatever. Well, I I, I kind of like it. It's almost like we're getting a horizontal progression rather than the vertical progression that's kind of neat yeah maybe so that is that is a good way to look at it actually so hey let's talk about someone that doesn't have gold hair let's talk about piccolo okay. uh spoilers sure. here i mean if you're listening to it you're expecting to be spoiled a little bit uh again not an original thought but i think it's a good question uh did piccolo's death mean anything to anyone I kind of thought, in a way, I thought it was kind of a nice nod that it was like full circle that would just come round again. Gohan kind of really being down on down on his luck, and just like yeah. at that moment, yeah, we just got a retelling of the Saiyan of the Saiyan arc of the same thing happening again. Piccolo sacrificing himself to save Gohan, but at this point. Right. I felt very different about Gohan at this point, and this was the biggest, biggest issue I had with this this entire saga, is that Gohan is treated like dirt. I don't, I, I mean, at the time, this is how I felt at the time. Yeah, now that we I know, disagree. At, at, no, at, at the yeah, end, we're gonna at get the into end, this no, don't, don't, don't worry, my, my attitude changed very dramatically when I realized where they were going with it, and I'm thinking, okay, now I get it. But at the time, 
when I'd seen that episode, because Resurrection Ever treated it quite differently. I didn't feel quite as, um, I didn't feel quite as str- passionately about Gohan. But in Resurrection F, I just felt like, oh man, this is like really, really bad. I mean, you know, the character that was meant to be penned as the successor to Goku in Z and what it was originally meant to be about Gohan and his development, and he's just completely fallen to bits. He can barely hold Super Saiyan level one. And at the time, I was just thinking, oh my goodness, imagine all the Gohan fans just kind of going from, he's gone from ultimate form to this in, what, the span of like 18 months or something like that? Wow. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> I again, my attitudes changed when I realized where they were going with it at the end of the arc. And that made me extremely happy that Gohan chose to go to Piccolo. The most, the, it made a lot of sense. He felt indebted to Piccolo for saving his life again and realizing in this world, and because he wanted to like spend more time with his family and concentrate on his studies, which is perfectly fine. But it, this return of Freezer made him realize in this world, I cannot neglect my training. I have to do something to protect my family because what if Goku is away training? We were lucky that he, we were, that we were heard. I need to be able to protect my, you know, my family and my friends and the planet. So I, I know I might not be able to be as strong as my father or Vegeta, but I want to be at least up there being fairly competitive. And I just felt like, good. I like this. This could be right. a ret- this could be a tour de force for Gohan. This could be like the second coming. A good second coming, not the bad Broly second coming. And, you know, I I think we'll see where it goes, because if you're following along with Toyotaro's manga, you know, well, guess what? He's not coming along for the ride. We'll we'll see where that goes. But just to quickly go back to your uh, Gohan fans, I I feel like it's it's almost a Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing. If you are a Gohan fan, I mean, yeah, is he being treated badly now? I don't know. Have you seen or watched Dragon Ball? Like, this is what Toriyama has done with Gohan literally since Gohan has been introduced. He's set up to be something new and great and realizes he can't be that. It's both Gohan realizing that and Toriyama as an author realizing realizing I really have nothing to do with this character and he kept trying to do something with Gohan and by the time you get to the boo arc he tried one last time and I think that's what fans really harp on I don't know why that in particular against boo really stands out with people because it's no different from every other time Gohan set up to be the hero either Gohan decides or Toriyama decides nope not right for you and takes him away to have that happen here again like yeah, of course. Are you paying attention? This is what happens. Gohan and Piccolo. Here we go. Okay. Gohan and Piccolo are my two favorite characters in the Dragon Ball universe. They have always been. Um, I've had conversations, even before this happened with Super, I have had conversations like this with people about Gohan so many goddamn times with all sorts of different types of Dragon Ball fans uh, regarding the treatment of Gohan. My personal thought is, is I think that it's perfectly acceptable that he doesn't, in in the context of the story, that Gohan doesn't want to be a great, amazing, legendary fighter, or even just a fighter in general. I think it is perfectly acceptable that he places value in other types of things, like having a family and taking care of that family and living a normal life with a job. Yeah. A lot of people that I meet, and, and I think I think the reason why is because they look to how cool he was in the fight against Cell. And he was extremely fucking cool. I agree. Cool. I liked him. I love him there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And but and you know what? Because a lot of people I know who who aren't Gohan fans only thought he was cool in that one fight against Perfect Cell when he goes to the, you know, the, the two form, you know, what later was turned into the two form. Uh, and every other time they're just like, oh, he's like an annoying whiny little bitch and blah, 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 this and that. He's just crying and complaining and mad, et cetera. And I, the reason that I've always liked Gohan is because of the fact that he's one of the few main characters that I feel consistently has a lot of development and changes and goes through a lot of different types of things. A lot more, actually, than, than at times Goku even does. The fact that, Go, that Gohan, for instance, in this case, actually two times in a row now for, for different reasons, was slacking off on his training. Where Vegeta remarks in the Boo, the Boo arc, when, they, when he, you know, we first see Vegeta again for the first time in a while, uh, he's like, you know, you were a lot stronger when you fought against Cell. You've been slacking off. And he's like, yeah, I've been going to school because the world's been at peace and I don't 
really care that much about practicing martial arts. Uh, I'm strong enough to be able to, you know, protect people if it calls for it, like I fought the fucking bank robbers and then, you know, got into the whole Saiyan man mess. And then in this case where he's an adult and now he's got a wife and kid to look after, it's like, yeah, like, because I liken it to this, for instance. I, what, I've been out here in California for a little while and there was a, uh, there was a very successful voice actor who I've, I've become acquainted with. And uh, there were rumors flying around that this this actor was going to be moving back to where they came from and away from L.A. when their career was really beginning to take off because they had met some girl that was living back in where they came from or whatever. And so all, uh, suddenly all of these people that I knew who were hearing about this were like, oh, my God, what is so-and-so fucking thinking that they're doing? Like, they're throwing their career away and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, hold on a minute. First of all, there's more to life than just your career. And second of all, they can still do they can still do acting from wherever. Maybe they're not landing big parts in California because that's where all the biggest stuff is. That's where the Gokus and the Vegetas of acting are, you know. But it's like they can still, you know, be an actor where they, you know, where, where they came from originally. And if they place more value in, you know, love and having a, a, a life outside of just their career, there's nothing wrong with that. And lecturing them is completely unnecessary. And I, and I know that that sounds like maybe kind of an extreme example to give, but I really think it's it's a good kind of, you know, same kind of metaphor where it's like, I don't think that Gohan has to be this super fucking badass, oh my god, character on the same level as Goku and Vegeta because he's a different kind of character. It's like, do we fault Bulma for being, like, not a fighter and weak or whatever and, and, and like, useless, quote unquote? Or not no, going Bulma's on adventures all the time anymore. Yeah, I mean, characters yeah. change. And sure, mm -hmm. maybe some of that is the fault of Toriyama kind of realizing, well, I don't know what to do with this character anymore, as he's done countless right. times with countless characters in countless series. It's not totally. restricted just to Dragon Ball. Um, right. But yeah, I well, but I also don't think that I don't think that it even Gohan and Bulma, like for instance, I don't think they fall into the same category as somebody like La like Launch or whatever. You know, some of those kind of characters that just fall by the wayside. Because like Bulma, Bulma's purpose is she's funny, and she is. She's fucking hilarious. And even Jocko, who's not strong at all in the grand scheme of things, he's he's funny and he serves his purpose. So like Gohan serving the purpose of just being a character in that universe who plays his part and has his development and his story for what it's worth. And the fact that Masuko, to go back to your bit about how, yeah, the fact that he's acknowledging, okay, maybe I should pick back up on this a little bit. Piccolo, help me out because this is my reason for doing that. That is good. That is a path of development. And I think that that's completely something that's worth appreciating. So I think this will actually maybe kind of actually be a point in Gohan's life where he's able to strike a perfect balance of the two. Because he's been conflicted, because he's half Saiyan, half human. He is, you know, Chi Chi want, wanted him to become a scholar, he has, but Goku wants him to be a competent fighter. And he has shown traits to be able to be that. Between those two, he's been conflicted, and it's caused havoc with his life. And, you know, he's had periods of stability, but in the end it comes back to bite him really bad in the fact that he is almost killed by Frieza and was barely able to kind of defend himself. And it's just like, okay. you know, he, it was just that moment of clarity. He just realized, I can't be one or the other. Let's try and do both. Because, yeah, he's reached a point where he's not be suddenly become, going to become stupid overnight. Yeah, he is, a, mm. he is an extremely intelligent person, probably quite close to Bulma in terms of intelligence. And yeah, mm. he's going to retain that. And also, I'm pretty sure that he's not going to get any sense of shame because I think Mr. Satan would be quite impressed. He says, hey, you know, my son-in-law is both you know, smart and strong. It's Yeah, he's not yeah. going to get any kind of like rejection. And I'm sure Videl's not going to suddenly say, no, you're not allowed to do that. You know, look after the baby. <laughs> She's not going to do that. Yeah, because, you know, she remembers when she liked to fight and, you know, learning about key control. That was cool. So she'll understand. So maybe this could be the point in Gohan's life where he goes like, you know what? I've actually found what, you know, what my place in life is. I don't have to be the strongest. But I certainly want to prove my, you know, what I can do. Meanwhile, in, a, in, a, in, in the abridged world, he grows up and suddenly he has a British accent. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, I guess kind of on the going going back to the original subject too about like, this, did Piccolo's death have any significance? I, I think the the answer in that we just talked about Gohan as a result of that was that the significance was it served as a point of development for Gohan's character. Yeah, so I think that was the significance. And I I, I think it gave us that great moment of 
was Gohan screaming in pain? Yes, he was. But he actually had another reason to do it. And that line from Goku about, I don't remember exactly what it was, like your message got to me or we heard you. Like, oh, that just hit. I, I don't remember the line because I yeah. think I was too busy tearing up. Like that hit me in <laughs> the right place. See, okay. And and right there. Okay, so the fact that you just said that a second ago, that that was the the raw emotion that you got from seeing that. So clearly, despite our complaints... <laughs> there, there was still something, there was a reason for it, yeah, yeah. No, there, there was still something to this that that struck a chord, and and I think again, we're still all you know looking to the future and and having um, you know some kind of positive hope that Super is going somewhere and going to have some interesting stuff. I, you know, and, and I and I was telling this to same pessimistic friend who will not be who will not be named that seeing uh, the little previews we've been getting of the future in Toyotaro's manga has been enough. For me to be like, you know what? I think this new arc that we're going to get is going to be really interesting, really entertaining, and could have a lot of new... Even though it's it's another tournament, you could say, it, it's still lending itself to... Because uh, it, it's very easy to, you know, to, to trash it for that immediately. But it, it's, still, uh, it's still lending itself, I feel, to uh, what could be a lot of really fun material, especially with both um, you know, the, the team that is representing... Uh, Universe Seven for Beerus, uh, as well as these these you know new characters that, I, despite the fact that by this point their reveal has been a little soured by the fact that um, you know the Dragon Ball Xenoverse character creator exists, <laughs> um, I, I'm still very curious to learn about a lot of them and what they're all about and kind of what's going to happen with that. I think could uh, could be very interesting. But uh, so I guess kind of uh, we've said almost. Has there been anything that we haven't hit up specifically about? the F arc itself yet? Like anything Mike or Roscoe you want to talk about? I, I kind of wanted to hit the music, but there's not, I feel like there's not a whole lot to say. It, it was kind of a retread nah. of what he did for the, the movie version. Mm. Uh, we did mention the animation a little bit. Uh, I just kind of want to go on record as uh, this is something I've been quoted a little bit out of context, but in context about, uh, I think part of the problem with the analysis of the animation, and I've, I've used this phrase a lot lately, is that I feel a lot of people... I hate to pull the age card on the younger spectrum, uh, confuse being a critic with being critical. And especially we're in this era of uh, analyzing a weekly TV show. I know it is at the AV Club, the website that kind of pioneered the uh, reviewing shows on a weekly basis. Dragon Ball, especially Dragon Ball Super, it, it, it's meant to be a disposable show to sell merchandise. And yeah, again, we do want to hold it to a higher standard because we love it so much. Uh, we're such big fans of the show. We want it to succeed and be amazing in all aspects. It's not really meant to be analyzed that way. And that doesn't mean you can't do it, but I think people lose sight of what Dragon Ball actually is, which is a mass market show primarily aimed at children to generate sales of merchandise to then make them into bigger fans. And then they will sell it to a, a new, generation of fans that they will re-indoctrinate into the series 10 years down the line like this is what's happening with the show uh, there's not really this master plan they're flying by the seat of their pants and again we wish they would do more and so I, I don't think the big hubbub over the animation, even acknowledging what a rush schedule it's under and how poor it can look sometimes, I don't think it's actually as bad as people say. A lot of people pull out those in-between frames and I think, go back and look at the movies. Go back and look at the recent movies. Go back and look at the original show. Go back and look at the theatrical films. DBZ Movie 6 has some of the worst animation uh, oh, in the, yeah. the show itself uh, compared to the show itself. I, I say that it's no different from how it used used to be and people come back no it's completely no it really is this is exactly how dragon ball has always been and will always be and you don't have to like it but you do have to accept it and yes some shots are not great but like Masako was saying earlier, that next episode is probably going to look better and uh, be a more enjoyable episode. So just hang on another week and remember that Dragon Ball is a serialized show. There's always something new on the horizon. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get too hung up over last week's poorly animated scene. All be beautiful points. I want to add uh, as an animator to that. Um, I, I this is this is also the case for honestly most shows these days is is absolutely how that is and i mean because even you look at any you know show on like nickelodeon cartoon network disney whatever uh there's very few if any at all shows 
uh, that I can think of off the top of my head, pretty much the only one I can think of at all really is, is The Legend of Korra, where like making the animation beautiful is a priority. Like nine times out of 10, it, it's, it's, really not that big of a deal to people to production companies making animated you know week to week shows or you know or, or just like ongoing shows to make the animation like a fucking masterpiece it's not because like maybe back in the day when like there was more money to be spent on 2d stuff it, it was a little bit more rampant so maybe we're just used to that but no that's not the way it is and you want to know something to anybody out there this this is a perfect tie-in if if anybody out there if you want to see Dragon Ball beautifully animated, then you know what you need to do? Watch Resurrection F the fucking movie. Because as far to, to me personally, and I, maybe maybe there's some of the older movies look better, but as far as I'm concerned, Resurrection F and the fight scenes in that movie are some of, if not the best looking animation that Dragon Ball anything has ever had. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty true. I'd say that it's up there with Fusion Reborn because up there I thought that, that that made me realize that just the close-ups of Gogeta just turning round before he just releases his final attack, well, one and only attack, was just like, <laughs> ooh, that looks crispy. I like Dead that. Dead Zone has great stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, I know. am looking at my laser discs on the wall of DBZ of Movie Dead 1. Zone. And <laughs> what I love about that movie, and not to promote how wonderful DBZ Movie 1 is, but that's exactly what I'm doing. It's not always <laughs> about the animation, but I think that movie has the animation. It has the choreography. Goku versus uh, Nikki and Ginger, that is some of the best choreography in the entire franchise franchise it's not just that it's also the amazingly dark gothic backgrounds that movie has ever the soundtrack to that movie that movie has everything and i think there's valid criticisms to make with the frieza movie uh yes the the fight choreography is good but is there enough imagination and how that's framed on screen and are we being kind of um tricked with the the fight choreography i think there's a lot of valid points to make there um and maybe that's just me coming from the 90s where everything in the 90s was better that's okay you can no no i mean that's fair no listen i i love i love dead zone too i'm i'm certainly not going to refute okay we're still saying i i I, (laughs) no i i think that it's particularly the z fighters versus the frieza army i think is like one of the most gorgeous looking animated sequences that dragon ball has had i like amongst the many other ones, particularly in the movies where they tend to have a little bit of a, a more of the budget put towards the visuals looking nicer. And on the other the other hand, too, by the way, like kind of taking it in another direction, I hear a lot of people who are big One Piece fans uh, criticize the anime for a lot of the same kind of problems that Dragon Ball has always had from back in the day, too. But recently, we just, I don't know if you, if you if, I'm assuming you guys probably haven't seen this, but the, one of the most recent episodes that aired for One Piece uh, was a, also a very big one that also featured a... Uh, a transformation of the main character. Uh, and it was beautifully animated, beautifully paced out. It felt like a 22 minute like feature film, the way that like it was choreographed and like storyboarded and everything it was fantastically done, I thought. And, uh, and you know, the, the show doesn't always get episodes like that on a fucking weekly basis. And it's probably not going to because it's the same kind of setup as with any shonen series, not just Dragon Ball. And and so on that note, what I'm what you know maybe might be the case, you know, and it, I think it's perfectly acceptable to to think this, as we're getting into the completely new material, this new uh, you know, Shampa arc, uh, with the uh, Universe Six versus Universe Seven tournament and all that, we might get some legendarily, you know, awesome looking battles between our favorite characters and these new characters coming up. We may get something like that that will go down in history, just like Goku versus Beerus and Goku versus Golden Frieza and the Z Fighters versus the Frieza Army, you know, became legendary and part of Dragon Ball's history in the last couple of years when those new movies came out. Who knows? Well, I guess to kind of uh, wind things down a little bit, do we want to talk about thoughts, hopes, predictions, anything at all about the uh, the Shampa arc as it'll now have already been started by the time that this uh, this Kerblog comes out? I'd probably just like want to say, like, we hold the kind of the in-betweener episodes, like all the little comedic moments in between the two movie arcs we held them in high regard and they were great and i'd just like to see more of that and now we're going into something which is completely new i have high hopes that it's just gonna be more of that so we can actually get what i believe is the right balance of comedy and action that the original dragon ball did so well 
and is what garnered the original fan base so brilliantly and what gt failed to do they failed to get the comedy action bound right and i feel like super when it's not reliant on the movies if i, th- I think super's like a child and the movies are its parents it it's kind of reliant on on its parents but now it's reached adulthood and it needs to now go out and venture on its own and see where it goes that's the way I see it. Yeah, I agree entirely. I think they were beholden too much to the original story while wanting to do something new with it while also stalling for time. To be fair, those movies made over $100 million worldwide. So I'm thinking, and it cost a tenth of that to make. So I'm thinking, right, like, exactly. Yeah, so, no so, wonder they uh, want to, like, kind of milk out that plot, those plots a couple more. You know, those plots, though. <laughs> Them plots, yo. What what about you, Mike? (laughs) What about me? Uh, I think I just kind of said it. I mean, I'm always excited for new material. Toriyama is looking to expand the world with the new underlying story and character designs that he's created. Remember, Toriyama is not involved on a week-to-week basis. He's the he does not write scripts for the show. He's not in the animation studios directing things. Uh, he's just providing the impetus for what is about to come. So I'm always interested to see what he's got in store for us. And I do like uh, interpretations of that by the production staff. So I'm always interested to see new things. And of course, I'm a little bit cautious about it. Uh, you know, I wouldn't hold out hope for those amazing moments. You, you guys still seem to think we're going to get some beautiful moments and maybe we will. But I don't think at the level that... Uh, Uh, We kind of remember, but a lot of that is also the rose tinted glasses. Uh, You you know, go back to DBZ 119 versus 120. We're going to have more of those moments. Yeah, I mean, that's no, that's totally fair. Uh, I don't think there's there's any harm in, in, you know, being grounded about it. I will say, though, on the case of um, of what you were saying, Moscow, with finding that that, uh, you know, that balance, I think maybe a good indicator, maybe a little bit of level of like, all right, there's some there's some confidence to be had here is. um, Merely the existence of this this new character uh, Monaka, who is like when I saw. For those of you who haven't who haven't seen this character, I, I I won't spoil too much, but I'll just say when I saw this 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 new character that will be introduced in Super very soon, I was like Toriyama, you beautiful son of a bitch. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you, right? <laughs> my God, I just don't don't ever change. <laughs> You know. It's the perfect answer for all the fans saying, I want Broly back. Oh, yeah, do you? Well, here's what you got instead. At first, I was just thinking, what the hell? And then I thought about it, I thought about it for a little longer. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is perfect. Because Beerus has been hyping this character up so much saying, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you're kind of tough. I thought someone who was better. You're okay. Yeah, you're okay, I guess. Not like the last guy. And and let me just let me just say the the, the day before, or rather within the day that we recorded this a few hours earlier before this, I was uh, I was hanging out with some fan with, with some friends who were uh, who are also big big Dragon Ball fans or or, ha- or like they they've been keeping up with Super and know what, what's going on about it. And I told them the uh, the premise of what the the Shampa arc is going to be about more or less, and then proceeded to show them Monaka. And basically, we were all laughing in joy for a good like twenty minutes just about that. And it was already made into like a great joke and not in like a mocking way, like in like a this is this is going to be hilarious kind of way. And uh, and, and I guess in, in terms of the I mean, I do I do like Shampa and Vados, like we don't know a whole lot about them just yet. Uh, the the anime, I think, uh, has a little bit of catching up to do because it seems like in the manga, Mike, you've talked about this a little bit in your podcast, but in the manga, they've already shown uh, scenes of, um, you know, what I think a lot of uh, they're going to be animating, like, in the, the upcoming episodes about, like, them looking for the Super Dragon Balls and, you know, uh, Kaioshin and uh, Kibito being split back up again, a lot of stuff like that. I think that we're going to be getting a lot of that uh, in the form of the next couple episodes before we like fully catch up with, with where the manga is. And then I think uh, probably at some point the show will like surpass where the comic is. Yeah, uh, I, I would assume. Yeah, and then the other thing too is I, I I know my my joke about like haha a lot of the universe six you know team characters look like they were made in the Dragon Balls universe uh, <laughs> you know character yeah, creator. Right, right. Um, that that that's a little bit like. Oh, you know, like, that's not fair to say that because of, like, you know, that's just, it's Toriyama style. He has a lot of, like, you could jo- you could make that same joke at any of the character designs of, like, Dragon Quest or, you know, Chrono Trigger or Blue Dragon, whatever kind of thing. It's like, haha, you know. I'm intrigued to learn about these guys. I, I just, just seeing them and the presence that they have is like, all right, I, I, I'm, I'm open. Let's, let's see what happens with this. And, uh, yeah, just, just the, just the concept of this and the fact that it's, it's, 
it seems like it has that um, that sense of like you know humor and seriousness balanced together, kind of like what we liked about Battle of Gods back in the day. Back in the day, you know, only a couple years ago, really. Well, in internet time, that was forever ago. Chris. Yeah. Oh, it was, no, it was, it was centuries ago by now. I, 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 it's making me still, despite again the the issues with the 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 Golden Frieza saga, as I'm still calling it. So there, you can suck my nuts. Um, <laughs> it's, sorry. Uh, it's uh, you know, I, I have confidence that we might get some cool stuff out of this. So uh, here's to the future with the next, you know, however long this might go, and and who knows, maybe there will be. Even more after the the Shampa arc, we we don't know how long they plan on you know doing this for. We've you know we've done uh, over a full you know twenty six episode seasons worth of episodes by this point. There's been no indication of how many they're going to do or how long this is going to go for. So uh, you know, I mean, in terms of length, they'll I think as this is Dragon Ball, they'll do it for as long as they can get away with sixty four whole episodes. <laughs> I think they'd like to like to see if they can get longer than GT. Any closing thoughts before we uh, we run away screaming and kicking? I'm excited. I'm optimistic. I'm also cautiously optimistic, but that's how I am with everything. I'm all those things. I'm all those things. <laughs> and a bag and, of chips. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> on that. On that. On that note. Uh, any well, Moscow, you first because uh, you have not gotten to plug your stuff since spring of last year, since fucking Resurrection F. So tell everybody out there uh, where they can find you on the interwebs. Well, you can basically find me on Twitter and uh, Moscow X, or you can check out my YouTube channel, Moscow X Stream, where I just post bad fan fiction videos, occasional anime review. And even maybe, you know, now just actually dabbling in some more Dragon Ball stuff, like editorials. And of course, they can hear you as Goku and Gohan on Dragon Ball Z Abridged through Team Oh, Four. oh my God, is that you? Whoa, whoa. Oh, we, yeah, I had no yeah, idea. that's me. I'm the Goku, the muffin button, whatever. Uh, <laughs> be, by the way, Ben Diskin, last time he answered the phone, uh, he, he literally, oh no, no he, re- he literally just responded with muffin button, and I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> So you've infected him. Congratulations. Anyway, Mike, I mean, everybody knows by this point, but do it anyway. Uh, hi, my name is Mike. I go by Vegito EX when I don't go by Mike. Either or is fine. Uh, I'm one of the four dudes that runs Kanzenshu, K-A-N-Z-E-N-S-H-U-U.com. We are that Dragon Ball site that all the stuff comes from. Uh, you can go there, you can read things, you can listen to things, and uh, thanks. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, thank you, everybody out there, whether you were on my YouTube channel or perhaps on the, the Consensu podcast feed. Oh, did you did you plug you, you plug that? Yes? What? Oh, yeah, we have a podcast. We haven't recorded one in a while because everyone's been sick and on holiday, but that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll get well soon, everybody, if you hear this either. Hey, everybody. I'm fine. I was considering just, I was just going to talk to myself for the next episode. <laughs> I don't care about you. I care about your wife and your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> your your boyfriend Heath Geo. I was gonna uh, say which boyfriend I have three. Uh, okay, yes, go check out the Consensu podcast, and you know if or if you're listening through this, I hope you enjoyed this fill in for a podcast episode. Nah. That's gonna do it. So, uh, and, and everybody, yeah, again, thank you for listening and for however long this went for. I think over an hour by this point. Uh, in the comments below, leave if you've been keeping up with the show, uh, leave us your thoughts about uh, the Resurrection F movie versus the. Uh, Golden Frieza adaptation arc thing, whatever you want to call it, uh, and uh, and and any thoughts and hopes and dreams, aspirations that you have for the Shampa arc. Still in uh, my that shit, is, Chris. I that dare is, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is that is already uh, that is that is already underway by the time that this comes out. Uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts and comments, and if you have ideas for future Dragon Ball or non Dragon Ball related curb lot topics in the future, leave a comment about that or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, all the usual links that I have. That's gonna do it. So we will see you next time on Dragon Ball Super Talks, talking about discussions. Bye.